Hey everyone, super fun day on the show today. Today we're looking, we're continuing our series on serverless applications and looking at using Firebase for our backend data store as well. Today we're going to be looking at using it for authentication. So if you have a serverless app, you want some way of securing it in the backend and so you need some sort of OAuth mechanism and fortunately Firebase makes that super easy. So, but in order to make use of that, you first of all have to understand a little bit about how Angular 2 routes can be secured. Uh, so we're going to first of all introduce you to some of those ideas around how you can provide can activate blocks on particular routes to make sure that we check for authentication first. And then we'll look at how to actually use OAuth to log into our application uh, using your preferred provider, whether that's Google or GitHub or Twitter or whatever else that you're into. It's going to be a great show. Thanks for hanging out. I know you're going to have a fun time. Let's dive in by setting up our OAuth authentication on our Firebase service. So if you go into your Firebase console, the first thing you want to do is to go into the Auth section. So in my case, I've gone into my Quote of the Day app, which we discussed in the last episode. If you haven't seen that episode, you should go back and check it out now. But we're going to go into our Quote of the Day application and go into our Auth settings. And then inside here, we are going to change our sign-in methods here where you can choose which OAuth providers you want to be able to support for your app. In my case, I've gone into Google and enabled Google, uh, and that is what we're going to use for the demonstration today, but feel free to use whichever provider you are most familiar with and most keen to pursue. All right, so once we've configured that, uh, really the only thing we need to do now is all the client side work to turn this on. So let's minimize that and grab our source base. Now, authentication stuff is already built into the Angular Fire 2 libraries that we've been using. They just It just needs to be configured. So I'm going to, first of all, uh, set up a little block here next to our Firebase config, which I'm going to call Firebase Auth config, and I can choose a provider here. So I've chosen the Google provider, but you feel free again to use whatever providers you want to use here, and a method of actually authenticating here. So you can use a redirect, or you, know, you can use username and password management if you want to use that through Firebase as well, and you can even register users and do all that good stuff. But for today, I'm going to use a Google, and I'm going to use a, a little pop-up authenticator that's going to fire when the user needs to be authenticated. Now, I've I've configured that block, but I haven't actually told uh, the Firebase module about that yet. So I'm going to paste that in. So with that done, now my Firebase is actually configured to use Google for pop-ups. And that's pretty great. But now we need to learn about routing uh, blocks, in, in particular about um, can activate blocks, about how we can set up guards so that the user can't navigate to our quotes list until they've been authenticated. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a new uh, new configuration item here, which is a can activate block. Now that can activate block uh, sort of takes an array of login guards or whatever kind of activation guards that you want to use. And guard seems to be the word that people use for this. So I'm just going to roll with that. So this is going to be our, our logged in guard. And uh, also what I'm going to do is, is change this app routing provider. So this logged in guard, the thing that's going to fire, this is going to fire when the user navigates to the quotes block. It's going to say logged in guard. And if we have a look inside this, you'll be able to see logged in guard is going to have a can activate method, which is implementing this can activate uh, interface. So it's going to have a can activate a method, which returns a Boolean, which basically says, can the user access this block or not? So in order for this to run, uh, I'm going to have to have some, uh, I'm going to make this an injectable, obviously. This is going to be an ad injectable. Uh, and I'm going to inject it into this uh, particular provider. Now, I can do that at the module level, but that's in fact exactly what this app routing provides are for. They're four components that you really want to tightly scope their injection scope to just this particular routing area. So my logged in guard will be sparked up and injected in here, and my can activate block will be set to be uh, false, so it will absolutely not work. So if we just went with, say, that much so far, uh, let's just have a look at our quote of the day application. We can go into, say, we want to go into our uh, slash quotes. And see, at the moment when we go to our slash quotes, because this block is guarded, we now find that we actually just don't go anywhere. So that's not really ideal for the kind of thing that we want to do. So we're now going to actually implement our can activate block and we're going to give it some routing if things fail. So let's go into our, our login guard, which is going to fire in our can activate block. And let's, let's replace, I've taken the liberty of injecting a login service and a router service. The router service is going to let us route around our application if we want to bounce somewhere. And our login service is going to check if the user has been authenticated yet. Now, I, we'll get to that a little further on in, in the session today. But first of all, let's replace this returning false. 
and reformat that so it looks good. So I'm going to put a log in here that just says the guard function has been invoked. I'm going to set the authentication to false. I'm going to ask the login service, hey, has this user been authenticated yet? And if they haven't, I'm just going to not navigate off to a login page. Okay, so that's pretty much the whole procedure for this can activate block. Now we'll see what happens is if we go to this quotes page, we should bounce off to the uh, login page and the login page is going to pop up our pop up section here. Now you might be wondering, how does this actually work? Well, the answer is if we go to our login component, which I've created here, it's a pretty minimalist sort of component. All we start to do here again, we ask, has the user been authenticated? If they have just navigate straight back to quotes and we're good to go. Possibly for bonus marks here, you might use some sort of preserved activated route that you can cache away and make sure you get bounced back to the same point in the app, but that's a nice little exercise for the reader. What we're going to do though, however, if they haven't been authenticated, we're gonna call our login method. And then once the login method completes, we're gonna navigate back if they've successfully authenticated. So we need to have a look at how to actually do that. So that can be our next little project. So let's go into login and see how that screen actually gets popped up. Okay, so inside our login method, we are gonna call our AngularFire uh, injected component, and we're gonna call angularfire.auth.login. Now this method here is going to default, you'll be recall back when we set our module configuration, we said what method to use and what provider to use. Now, if you want to change that, so say you want some sort of dynamic runtime level way of doing that, uh, then you can of course change that when you actually call the login uh, service login method and override it with what you want. But for now, I'm just going to stick with the standard login method. This is the guy that's then going to do the pop-up and allow us to authenticate uh, that user against the particular Google service or whatever we're using for login, OF login. Now when that's successful, we get called back with an auth state. And the auth state is gonna give us a whole bunch of properties like a display name and a photo URL. So we can slurp that out. Uh, we're gonna set our authentication to true and then we're gonna let the login complete. And of course, if we ever need to log out, we can call that auth.logout matching method to this one and then we can log the user out. But with just those changes in play, we should be pretty good to have a look uh, and actually log in the user. So let's go back to where we were here and we'll bounce over to login and we'll see this login method pop up and it'll say quote of the day would like to view your email address and I can allow that. When I allow that, I'll see that it now redirects back to my particular homepage of my quotes and I can retrieve my quotes. So that's pretty much all we wanted to cover today. Uh, one nice little feature I've added here is make use of this service in the menu. So if you go into the actual menu block, uh, you'll see that in my HTML, all I've done here is if the user is authenticated, the login service uh, is authenticated, then I'll just make use of that property to set the photo URL and display name. And those are the values that we retrieved earlier. Okay, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show you today. Uh, I've got a little bit more advanced version of this committed to GitHub if you want to check it out from the show notes. And in the more advanced version, I actually make use of that component that we talked about uh, after the login, the OAuth values, and I actually squirrel them away in local storage. So if you're interested in doing that, so then the next time that we go in, we don't get this kind of uh, particular process where I have to get a pop-up or anything like that. I just purely uses tokens to do its work. So that's pretty cool. Uh, stay tuned. Next time on the show, we're going to look at actually editing these values. So we now have secured them and completely serverless kind of mechanism, but we haven't yet provided a way to edit them. I wanted to do the authentication stuff today though, so that next time we come in, uh, we can secure down the actual edit operation to be only for authenticated users. That's going to be fun. Make sure you hang out for that. It's going to be great. We'll see you then.